Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am in the Piper Aero. Now, the Piper Aero is an aircraft that I used to fly a while ago. I used to fly, in fact, for a while, I flew it almost exclusively. It was my favorite general aviation aircraft. And I have since migrated to aircraft that are a little faster but I thought I'd circle back around today and fly the Aero, um, the Aero 4 is, is actually the one that I'm flying with the, um, with the turbo uh, charger. All right, so um, if you notice a lot of uh, YouTube, con a lot of YouTube content creators for flight simulation tend to migrate to the latest and greatest aircraft and rarely do you see them circle back to aircraft that they claimed that they loved and that they plan to fly often um, but I guess there's always something new on the horizon um, but you know if you really want to you can always take the time and circle back to uh, just to some of the other aircraft in fact I've got a hangar full of uh, general aviation aircraft that uh, that I should fly more often. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's check, make sure the mixture is on, uh, prop is working, throttle is working. Uh, my mags are hot, so let's uh, let's cool those off, and let's uh, let's. Go ahead and get started here. Now I'm not going to go through a checklist. I am going to run a mental checklist, which means that I probably skip, uh, miss some things. All right. So first thing I want to do is check my trim. Make sure it's right here. Make sure that I got it to take off. Um, let's see my trim. That's apparently electronic because I'm not able to um, I should be able to move it why is it not moving hmm. yeah, move it manually all right okay so the trim is set fuel valve is on um, yep and let's turn the power on and let's put it back on the left tank. Uh, let's see. Let me get back properly in my pallet seat here. And let's go down to these fuel tanks. So I've got uh, roughly the same amount of fuel in each tank. So it doesn't matter which tank I start on. And so let's go ahead and, um, and get the aircraft started. Um, I do have a flight plan that I do need to enter, so that's going to take a, a minute or two. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the mixture up, prop up, and we we'll give it some fuel. I feel, turn the fuel booster on. I got positive fuel flow here. Fuel uh, bowel is open, brakes are set, mags are hot, clear right. Don't see anybody out there and clear uh say <laughs> clear left and clear right. Um I'm probably the only one you know who um who have to work out left and right each time. Alright, got that window open, give me some air. Prop. Clear prop. Alright, she fired right up. Alright, so I want that. RPMs up to about a thousand. Oil pressure is alive. So here's my oil pressure here. And even though it's daytime, just to help you see these gauges, I've realized that it helps if I turn the lights on. Um, so let me see if I can brighten those up some. That's the wrong one. All right, so let's try this one here. 
There we go. Yeah. So that probably will help you guys out. All right. And let's see. So what's next? All right. Let me pop out here and um, turn my alternator on. Um, and this, if I look at my amperage, this will give me a chance to double check that my alternator is working. And you do, you do see it coming up. So that's a good thing. All right. And my auto extension is, I think it's on. So I think what that means is that if the aircraft think I'm landing, it automatically drop my gear, um, which is a good thing. All right. So let's just look around the cabin. Outside air temperature is is 50. Looks like it's about 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty good weather. Um, yeah. All right. So that means I can actually go ahead and close this guy here, and I'm sure that helps you hear me better. And go ahead and put my headphones on. All right, so I know you can hear me better now. And, and let's go ahead and get our flight plan set up. Too bad I can't um, import it, put one in sim brief and then import it into the GTN 750. Maybe one day we can hope, right? All right. So I'm at uh, San Luis. The plan is to fly to to Mojave Air Force Base. Um, that's uh, let's see. That's about 126 nautical miles, and I do have a flight plan set up. So so yeah. This is the flight plan. Oh man, got plenty of traffic out there, doesn't it? Um, and so I am going to to take off on the Winer Four. Uh, so that's going to be a procedure, a departure, and because there are some things that are slightly different, I for this since the GTN doesn't use the latest ARAC or the latest database I'm going to have to use one that's a little bit older which is the Wana 3 um, but as far as I'm concerned uh, they both are so similar that uh, and they're both going to transition me to fellows um, VOR. So yeah, so let's uh, let's go ahead and load that departure. And and I'm looking at altitudes here, and I want to be at six thousand at Winer. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So the next waypoint is going to be. L17, that's in Taft, Taft Kern, and then we'll make our way east to um, to KT Sierra Papa, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of this airport, but um, look like it's named after maybe perhaps a Native American tribe. Uh, and then our final destination, uh, backspace, our final destination is going to be Mojave, K M, Mojave L. Okay, so that's there. And we've got our flight plan built. Okay. So, um, let's get our. 
ADAs, um, let's see, I've got two radios in this guy, so let's go ahead and tune this to 120.6. That's going to give me my ADAs. That's on COM2. And make sure it's on. I'm not hearing ADAs. And 120.6. All right, let's double check. Make sure I've got the right um, frequency. I'm actually going by memory. And let's see. where is, let's see. I'm at the top here. Um, actually, remove info. Uh, actually, I thought I wanted to take off on 2-9. I'll uh, select departure. And runway two, uh, so I don't get the option to use runway two nine. All right, so we we'll use runway one one. All right, uh, it's just that they tend to give me two nine on, and the winds tend to favor two nine at this airport. Um, of course, I could always take off two nine and fly that downwind. Um, which is probably what I do. All right. Um, so let's go here. And I don't know why I'm not seeing in my flight plan the the airport a uh, the air the airport letters. Um, flight plan. So let's go, let's go here and hmm. uh, let's see, let's go down. Hmm. I want to get, um, some waypoint information and and skip K S um, K S B P. All right, that's what we want. Okay, frequency. ADAS is one twenty point six, which is what I put in there. Ground is 121 and tower is 124. Just what I thought. Uh, ground is 121.6. So let's go ahead and fix this guy. Uh, 1216. Pop him in. And 124. Set that up on standby. And radios are tuned. Um, altitude is at elevation is 212. So let's go ahead and get this guy set. That's 200. That's about 212. Maybe, maybe about, maybe about there. All right. And because I can't get my ADAS, um, that radio, oh, you know what? My avionics may not be on. Duh. Okay, my avionics are not on. All right, so let's turn our avionics on. And that's going to be, all right. That's right, this aircraft does. does San Luis ORGNL information November. 1600 Zulu weather. Wind 290 and 5. Technically. Visibility 10. 
sky clear, temperature 1.3, That's a loud. Point 1.2, altimeter 3011, arriving runways 25, 29, departing runways 25, 29, advise on initial contact you have November. Let me turn it down some. That's really loud. Um... And San Luis Co RGNL information November. Well, got November. 1600 Zulu weather. Wind 290 at 5. 5. Sky clear. Temperature 13. 2.12. Altimeter 3011. 3011. Arriving runways 25. That's what I got. 29. Departing runways 25. 29. Advise on initial contact you have November. All right, I got November. So I can turn COM2 off. And OK. So I'm going to turn on my, um, my beacon light, which I should have turned on before I started. I told you I missed when you when you don't do that checklist and you think you can remember everything you actually find out you can't really um, anyway um, so I've got the chat I got November winds 290 at 9 so yeah we are gonna fly that downwind uh, to pick this up um, all right so uh, let's Go ahead and call for taxi. And San Louis Ground Era 286 Fox Trot Whiskey is at Transient Overnight Parking, ready to taxi, departing to the west with information November. Taxi 2, runway 29 via Alpha 286 Fox Trout Whiskey. So I know that the, um, the call sign that I'm using differs from this call sign, but for this aircraft, that's the call sign I've always used. All right, so let's um, hold our brake and release them. Brake check, right brake, left brake, brakes are good. All right, now this is a complex aircraft, so so we are going to pick up our, let's see, where are we? Yeah, okay. I was thinking I was at a different location, kind of, sort of. My, the airport environment has been updated since the last time I've flown here. Um, I think I downloaded a different airport. Let me get my taxi lights on. Strobe lights are off. And come down here. And so, should we do a run up? I guess we should. Um, that's one thing that I haven't really been doing with some of the aircraft that I do fly. Um, primary reason is a lot of times to run through the interactive checklist does take um, 20 to 40 minutes depending on the aircraft. And I try to shorten my very long videos by that amount. Um, so if I know a video is going to be an hour and a half, then I can take off 20 minutes or uh, 20 to 40 minutes by not doing a run up. Um, some of the aircraft run ups are real quick, like, um, like, one of the turbos that I fly 
uh, just a matter of checking the ice and, and that kind of stuff, you know, it's not a lot to do. Um, this one, if I was using the chat list, wouldn't be too bad. Whoa, Nelly. All right. Profits into the wind. Set the break. Okay. And we'll run this guy up to about, uh, I think we'll run it up to 1700. All right, check, do mad check. All right, max look good. Suction look good. Or temp or pressure look good. Amps look good. Uh, let's um, let's check the amps with the lights. Okay, amps look good. This is my amp meter here. I'll do that one more time for your benefit. So you can see I burnt, pull more amps once I turn those lights on. All right, and let's um, do a prop test. All right, prop RPMs come down to as appropriate and one more time I don't see any oil on the windshield the suction does go down and comes back up all right so so we are looking good all right so that's uh that's our run up it's back down to about a thousand and go ahead and switch to tower a little bit, uh, let me get up, get up to uh, to the um, whole short line <laughs> before I call. All right, so brakes can come off. San Louis Tower. Error two eight six Foxtrot Whiskey is holding short runway two nine. Are ready to depart to the to the east. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm so used to flying v this guy VFR. I forgot I was gonna fly the uh, the, the winer. Request downwind. Um, requesting the downwind track to the east. Um, 286 Foxtrot Whiskey. Clear for takeoff to uh, runway 29. Uh, downwind left downwind to the east um, all right so that's good enough <laughs> all right all right so all right so strobe lights and come on landing lights and come on taxi lights and go off don't need navs okay so it's a 6,100 foot runway. All right, we're gonna rotate. I think it's 70 at 65, I believe. All right, let's get these flaps in. Let's uh, get this guy right here lined up. Um, not this guy, but this guy here. Okay, two niner, and let's get this set to two niner. All right, all right, I think we're good. All right, and we're on our takeoff roll. L speed's coming alive. Rotate. 
So that's what our gear was trying to tell us. It was in the up position. All right, gear should be coming up. And, um, wow, we had way too many flaps in. Let's get a trimmed. Right rudder there. All right, let's make that downwind, that uh, crosswind turn. And we'll continue that climb on up through 1200. So let's go ahead and um, and turn our autopilot on so we can fly that whiner. All right, so autopilot come on and. And let's turn it on nav. That's on GPS. Let's get these flaps out. Make sure that they're out. And our gear is up. Okay, landing lights can come off. And autopilot should be on. And should be flying the nav. Let me just turn away and see if it corrects. Okay, yep, I think it's correcting. And we trim for a 500 foot climb. Keep an eye on our exhaust gas temperature. And we need to decrease our power just a little bit. Get it out of the red. No, not our power, but our RPMs. All right. And that 500 foot a minute climb looks good. We're up around 3,000, so it'll soon be time to. Uh, we didn't pick up that that track, so autopilot is on. CDI, it's on GPS, let's see, now one, and what am I missing, guys? Ah, uh, you know what, I'm not sure that the, um, that the autopilot really works well with the GTN in this aircraft, that might be um, my issue. I don't need an heat. 
um, just looked at the temperature. Uh, so, I guess we'll fly ahead and straight. Okay, so let's, uh, let's turn our head and on, set this back to the head in position, and find our head and book. I see it here. And looks like it's going to point us in the direction that we want. Right, so maybe back to the west, of, uh, to the uh, north a little bit. All right. And we want, let's see, let's adjust our mixture a little bit, bring our exhaust gas temp up some. And Make sure that we're holding that 500 foot a minute climb at the very least. So now we can turn back to the um, back to zero eight two is what let's see is what we want. Okay. And we want seventy five hundred since we since we are flying VFR. We never did we never did actually file for the IFR. Um all right, so let's uh, go ahead and switch tanks. So we boost the pump. Goes on. Switch to that right tank. And if you boost the pump and come off. trying to figure out why I couldn't, let's see, or well, maybe you don't have a, uh, a secondary radio in here, I mean uh, GPS, so, so let's, uh, let's zoom out a little bit, and we are coming up on Weiner. 
it's like Weiner is in five nautical miles. So we headed east. East is odd, which is why I'm flying 7,500. Okay, so most of you guys who watch my channel already know this, but just in case I've got uh, somebody new to flying, um, one of the things that we do to determine which altitude we're gonna fly at is is if our airport is in a easterly direction, our destination is in a, a thousand to go, is in an easterly direction, then we fly an odd number. If it's in a westerly direction, we fly an even number. So, so that does not mean the route because sometimes you got to fly a little little bit west to turn to the east so it depends on the direction of that of your of your airport you're flying to all right so um when i say east then i'm talking altitudes of three thousand five thousand seven thousand nine thousand and so forth and so on okay so I know I want a odd altitude, 7,000. Now, why 500? Any time that I'm flying BFR, then I'm always going to add 500 to my, to my altitude. Um, if I'm flying IFR, then I don't add anything. So I am flying VFR. So I'm at 7,000 now. And which is my desired altitude, but I'm flying E, I'm flying VFR, so I'm adding 500. What that does is it keeps separation for the guys who are being watched, um, who's on the IFR plan, um, that, um, you know, if somebody's in the same direction, flying the same direction, in a faster aircraft, then they would pass 500 feet. They would pass theoretically 500 feet below me. Therefore, I would not interfere with with that traffic if ATC didn't see me and uh, and the pilot didn't see me. Generally speaking, what ATC would do is either A, um, warn that pilot that there is traffic. Um, okay, let me nose over here. And try and get settled. Generally, ATC would warn that pilot or they would vector that pilot, that traffic away from me. All right, so, all right, let me adjust transition to cruising altitude speeds. So uh, I think I want 23 on the prop. And and about thirty on the manifold pressure, and this gives me my cruise setting 
for a decent economy. I'm uh, 120 knots indicated, 150 over the ground, 148 over the ground, which I'm going to lose a knot or two as I trim. trimming and from what I understand it can take about five minutes to trim this guy out in real life too so so this is really the way the trim works in this aircraft. Now let's see if she comes back up. Right now she's oscillating a little bit. Kind of up and down, up and down very subtly but that's what's happening and hopefully she will ease out on zero I haven't touched anything and she's coming back up but I think she's going to come back up a little nose high so I'm going to trim it down just a touch at this point and as you can see just about too much this trim get really sensitive So what happens is when that nose goes down, she, she, the aircraft speeds up and by speeding up that creates lift so the nose goes up which, which um, slows up the aircraft causes, causing the nose to drop some. Anyway. I think I got a trim as good as I can hope for. Um, I'll do a quick course correction. So I'm going to take my head in just a touch to the, um, to the right. Now, let me look at my flight plan. So, I am flying to Fellows, and Fellows, I'm, I'm only just over a mile from Fellows, so, so don't have to worry about that. Um, and what I was looking for to see if I had any more VFR, v, VORs in my flight plan that I could just fly to as opposed to using the GPS. Okay, left to 070. Alright. And so we're going to go left 070 which is this guy. I'm going to just a tad late. Alright, so that turn caused me to lose a little altitude. And 
with the oscillatings on the pull back up on the yoke just a touch to hook to uh, to raise my nose try to recover some of that altitude that I lost in that turn Take a look at my map, and I am on course. My chat fuel message is on, so I'm gonna go to my right tank now. I keep thinking my fuel nozzle knob is here. It is in a different aircraft, uh, but on this aircraft is in a different place. Fuel pump comes on. Change to left tank. Almost over rotated that. And give it a tad power to to um, to hopefully climb back up to altitude All right. And thought I cleared that message. I'm on I should be on the um, on the right tank but I'm on the left tank I'm gonna go back to the right tank and that was a no-no I was supposed to turn my fuel boost pump on before I changed um, fortunately the aircraft was forgiven enough to not penalize me about that. Alright, so I'm 12 nautical miles from uh, from Taft Kern. Putting in a little power. You might see my um, manifold pressure change just a little bit as I add power. I'm climbing at about 20 to 25 feet a minute. And let's see if we can't see Taft Kern, the airport down there somewhere. Um, I think the field We should fly. Yeah, here's the field. No, no. Let me see. Yeah, here's the field here, I think. Right here. 
right here for a second. I thought that was a tower, <laughs> but that's, the, that's actually the field. <laughs> All right. And you can see the, uh, the, the, the cityscape. Right, so I'm up to altitude, so I'm going to see if I can dial back the power just a touch. And hopefully she'll settle down on zero. Oh, it looks like I need to make some corrections. So I'm going to take my heading book and go one notch to the left. I may have picked up some wind. A significant crosswind is blowing me a little off course, so trying to correct for that. Turn to a head in a 078 in four minutes. I mean, seconds. All right, 078. So I am going to leave it. I am going to leave it where it's at because we were a little off. Next waypoint is in 47.7 nautical miles. Now, without flight following, I wouldn't have to worry about a thing. I wouldn't have to worry about talking to ATC on this flight or anything. And since I don't have flight following, then I guess I'm good. Now, I'm a little bit high. So, I just peeled a little bit off the off the power and I 
I am get rid of this guy here. I am keeping an eye on my vertical speed. And then my manifold pressure is pretty much back down to 30. But you see, I'm now I'm losing about 12 to, to, to 15 feet per minute. And one of the things with losing feet per minute is you speed up and that causes the the oscillation a little bit but um, it's going to take me a minute to bleed off this this hundred plus feet that I got that I picked up So just bear with me guys and well before I take a break I guess I can uh, go ahead and correct my course. So 078 is what I want. So if this is 8, this tick here. Then I want to be just before it. And I think that looks good. Now, I want to get some information about this waypoint. Particularly, I want to see the elevation. The elevation is 4,000 feet. I'm at 7,500 feet, so I should be okay on the elevation. These mountains look pretty high in front of me, don't they? All right, so that's why I want to check that. And let's go back. I don't see any red in our path so I am in this green valley here so I think we'll be okay at our current altitude um, let's see if we can get an aid us uh, AWAS so I mean sky vector and Tef Kern I don't know if they got a, a, a wasp frequency or not. Uh, 121, 12. And Bakersfield. Let's get the weather from Bakersfield. Because that's, yeah, that's probably, oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. My bad. So, I've got sky vector up and I was going to look at the the AWAS for Taft Kern which we which we're leaving now but Bakersfield ATUS is 118.6 and it's actually not that far it's actually um, here and I should be about here so so if I consider the weather dome about here, then uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry.
I think that's, yeah, Bakersfield is this guy. They do have the par parallel runways. This is L46. Okay, so anyway, um, so yeah, and that was um, 118.6 for the um, ATIS frequency. took off with z 3012 so the altimeter is has not changed dramatically and we do want to make sure that it's not going down too far when we get to these mountains because we don't want to crash into them okay so I'm going to take a break and speed things up.
So I'm entering aerospace, as you can see. And this is um, a MOA, a military operations area. And I did check and it's not in use at the moment. So it's okay for me to fly into Mojave. Pop our map out. And we are pretty close. Airspace is Edwards. And got twelve mi twelve nautical miles to uh, Kilo Tango Sierra Papa. Right, I'm about even on my gas tanks, so I can continue to stay on that left tank a little bit longer. That means I'm probably going to land on my right tank. Hope you guys enjoying the flight and taking in the scenery. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is default scenery. Yeah, this would be default scenery. No ortho here. There's a road down there that Peter's into nothing. I may be. Yeah. All right. Let's do a little correction here. See if we can't get the aiders for this for this airport. Uh, I said aiders. <laughs> I mean uh, the weather. Um, AWAS one twenty point zero two. I should be able to get the app the weather for our destination. 
altimeter 3031. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dial in the the Mojave frequency 127.42 and not quite getting it. I am going to leave the radio on. Frequency alive. Well, no, I'm not. Okay. Get rid of this guy. Check my course on my, on my line. All right, so probably won't see my airport probably over top of it. Of course, we can cheat. And there it is. All right, so I missed that message, but it wanted me to turn to 096. And we can start getting down. Oh man, look at our altitude. We somehow never that slipped by me. Too busy sightseeing, right? Okay, so Mojave. is at an altitude of 28.01 so 38 is going to be our pattern and we never did get um, we never did get weather, but they got an AWAS 132.22. So let's let's dial that in. 138. One, uh, 132. 22. Mojave information Oscar. Oscar. 1700 zero weather. Moonlight and variable. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 3,500 view. Temperature 21, 2.1. Altimeter 3023. Arriving runways 3026. Departing runways 3026. Advice on initial contact you have Oscar. Oscar. And 3023. And we'll take runway three, uh, three zero, and that's right traffic, which means that we want to keep the airport tower or the airport on the right, and we are eight nautical miles from the airport. So I'm going to take control of the airplane. And it's my aircraft. Okay. Three zeros, this long one here. And 
we're actually on the wrong side of the airport. So let's go ahead and make this turn. While we are at least six miles out, continue our descent. Look for hills that we don't want to, um, to see fit into, control flight into terrain. And 48 is what we want to get down to. Mojave traffic. Mojave traffic error 286 Foxtrot. Uh, 286 Whiskey Foxtrot is six, five and a half miles to the west. Uh, inbound right traffic runway. Um, three zero Mojave. So 500 to our 48. All right, let's do a glumps gas. Lights, and then lights, undercarriage, a little early for that, mixture, and prop, and we are turning down, we're entering the downwind, and we're at 48. Mojave traffic, error 286 Whiskey Foxtrot is on downwind. Runway three zero four stop Mojave. And one thing that I didn't do is I didn't change my frequency one, two, uh, seven. 127.6 Mojave uh, Mojave traffic error 286 Whiskey Fox Trot is on right downwind runway 304 stop Mojave all right so let's put a head and bug on 30 All right, so we are just about a beam. We're in flat range. So gas, lights, undercarriage. Mixture and prop. All right. Let's 
so we don't have any flaps in. Right. And let's go ahead and add a notch of flaps. Mojave Tower, um, Mojave Traffic, Arrow 286 Whiskey Foxtrot is turning right base, runway 30, four stop Mojave. All right, so let's put eyeballs on that runway. So it's hard to make that base turn without knowing where the, where the, um, where things are. Okay, gear is down. Mojave Tower, 286 Whiskey Fox Trot is turning final runway 30, four stop Mojave. All right, so keep that descent rate. Look like I'm a tad high. Put in a little slip here. Flaps. I want to slow it down. Got plenty of runway, so I'm good. But uh, I think 80 is about what what I want. All right, come off the um, short final runway three zero. Some on short final here. Track that center line. Transition. Butter. Dynamic braking. Stick is pulled all the way back. Exit to the left here. Next runway. Look like that's gonna put me on Charlie. Got traffic. I'm just gonna avoid him. I'm gonna exit to the to the left on Charlie. And he is taken off inconsistent with the um, with the Avis. Run the Adels one more time. Um, 
copy information Oscar. Oscar. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind 320 and 3. Visibility more than 10. 320. Sky clear. And we just landed on 30. So, so yeah, he's um, he definitely shouldn't be there. Uh, but that's uh, Traffic Global who put him there. So anyway, uh, let's get cleaned up. FLTT, so that would be flaps, lights, strobes come off, landing lights can come off, taxi lights can go on, and don't need taxi lights, so they go back off, and um, transponder and trim. Transponder is uh, set to on, and Actually, we can set it to standby at this point and trim can go back to to neutral. Okay. And we are cleaned up. And Mojave traffic error 286 Whiskey Fox truck is that is clear the runway at Charlie and taxing to the hangers Mojave all right so we just taxi to this first hangar over here uh, on the left and shut down so they do have a really nice aviation museum at Mojave in real life um, I've never been to it but I'm it's notable enough for me to know about it um, so if you guys are ever in the area and you can make a stop at Mojave, do so just to check out their museum. Okay. And let's just go over here. I don't see anything coming. And this is where we are parked. All right. So parking brake comes on. And switches. That's fuel. And alternators. And avionics. This aircraft really didn't have avionics. Let's turn let's turn these lights back down before we Yeah, okay. Didn't really have avionics. So this is actually the master. Um I bad. Okay. Um and any more switches that we got on, let's turn all our radios off. Something I tend not to do. And even though it's in the um, in the checklist to turn them all off. Um, but when I start up the aircraft, I think they they tend to be on. Alright, and transponder can go off. And master. And Max, we have my Max uh, mixture. All right, prop has stopped spinning, and now let me turn these Max off. Um, the Max are off. All right, and I can turn the fuel off. Fuel is off. All right. And she is set for the next flight. Um, if I wanted to, I could just put some chucks on it so that um, it tend to actually stay windy here at at Mojave. So the chucks are probably probably a really good idea. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this flight. I certainly did. I hope you will follow me on my next one. And 
Until next time. Y'all come back now, dear.